Hi everyone. Um, this video was something I have been wanting to do. So anyway, <laughs> it's Mia. Um, not a role play audio, not a storyline. I was asked to uh, do a self harm role playing audio. And if those audios are for you, then I hope you find comfort in them. Um, but however, <laughs> because of my background in the medical field and because of my own history with self-harm, I don't think that's something I'm comfortable in doing. So instead, I just thought I would sit here and um, sort of respond to a specific request that I received and, um, and maybe share my own story too. Um, first and foremost, uh, I am not a therapist. <laughs> I am not a replacement for a therapist either. Um, I also want to let you guys know that I am deactivating comments in this video. Not because I don't think that there would be some very supportive um, responses or that you all would support one another, but I worry that there will be cruel people who will leave cruel comments. Um, and I don't think that's fair for those who are opening up or who are, I don't know, just trying to be a little vulnerable. I also feel like I need to set my own boundaries because I'm going to be a little vulnerable with you guys. So I hope you understand. Um, so I know that for many of you, my videos and audios are a comfort. And I hope that you find enjoyment in them and that you get to fall into a fantasy. And the reason why I am choosing to not do a role play in regards to this certain topic or specific topic, um, I don't think that it should be a role play. Uh, I know that I touch on a couple things that are definitely um, gut-wrenching, like the cancer awareness audio that I did. That was really hard to do for myself. Um, there was a lot of emotion in there. Um, I've been touched by people who uh, have died of cancer, and it's it's not a joke. Um, and I used that audio more as a, like I said, awareness. Um, and I think that we all kind of at least experience something like that in our lives of somebody just being very ill. Um, I think this is different, though. Uh, I think that... There's a lot of stigmatization against self-harm. Um, and, uh, okay, so someone had asked me um, that I do an audio uh, in regards to how I would react if I came across someone who I love harming themselves. And <clears throat> I think that that's a fair request I just don't think that it should be a role play. Um, but again, that's my opinion. Whatever you find comfort in, please take that comfort. I know that there are countless audios like that. I know that there are countless VAs who, who do that. Um, but uh, it's just not, not my speed. Maybe in the future, I don't know, I would have to think of something very tasteful, um, very gentle and doing something like that um but for now I think it's more important that I kind of like you know be more honest about who I am as a person and this is who I am <laughs> so I'm the type of person that would tell someone that I'm there for them and I would encourage them to know that I love them and I may not understand the circumstances that are leading them to that moment of harming themselves, but I, I understand to an extent. Um, like I said, I would probably share my own story. And I'm, I am definitely someone who has harmed themselves, and I do not find any pride in that. I don't think that it's a club that anybody should want to join into. Um, it's, 
It's definitely nothing that makes me separate from others. It just means that I needed to find a better way to deal with those outside forces that made me feel like that was the only outlet that I had. And so that's what is leading me to this audio or video or whatever, me just talking. Um, I think, okay, this is going to be silly, but I'm really very thankful for the education that I have been given. And it was because of that that I started to love myself and my body and who I am a lot more. Follow me here, okay? (laughs) So all of these adorable little cells (laughs) that make up who we are, that are the building blocks that make up our skin, our eyes, our voice, (laughs) that make up every single freckle on our body. All those little cells are like ingrained and designed to protect us. Like, that is literally what it is. I mean, sometimes they get overprotective. As somebody with an autoimmune disease, it's kind of frustrating because it's like calm down immune system (laughs) but um what i mean though is that at the heart of it it's all coming from this innate encoding of they're there to protect us and so when you get a scratch or when you get a bruise or or when somebody self-harms all of those little cells work so hard to patch you back up. And I find like the beauty in that. Um, It's probably the nerdiest thing I'm ever gonna say (laughs) and the most sentimental thing. But I figure that if all of those little adorable cells can work so hard to just make sure that I am okay and have all of these systems in place to keep me going and patch me back up and fix me, then I could do my part and make their lives a little easier. So, I don't know. I don't know if that's gonna resonate with anybody. It probably won't. I'm probably crazy, (laughs) but I hope that if anybody is listening and I don't know if anybody's gotten this far but if anybody is listening and if you are going through this if you are going through this whole process of thinking hurting yourself is the only way to get through things from somebody who has overcome it, it's, it's not the only way. And I just know <clears throat> that even though, even though there's probably this mindset of, well, it's only you, so who cares? Your little cells care. If you genuinely feel or if the mindset is that, you know, I'm alone in this, first of all, there is usually somebody, an entirely different person, who cares. Second of all, there are millions of little guys that have made you up and they care. They work very hard to keep you going. (laughs) So in the description box, I am leaving some resources, not just for those who need a forum or to stay anonymous, um, not just for people who are suffering through self-harm or who are experienced self-harm, because not a lot of people think it's a suffering situation, but I think that our bodies are very precious, 
and that we should take care of them. <clears throat> I'm not going to do the whole, like, our body is a temple thing, but I think it kind of is. <laughs> um, anyway, before this gets very long-winded, if you're still listening, um, there are, like I said, resources in the description box, uh, not just for people who are going through this, but also for people who love people who are going through this. Um, because sometimes it's hard to be there for somebody. So this probably wasn't the audio that people were hoping for. Um, that's just not who I am and it's not true to who I am as a person. So yeah, I hope that you guys are all okay. I hope you guys take care of yourselves and I love you all. Um, Okay.